how is Tesla kind of impacting the automotive market and this kind of push towards EVs? Like um, you mentioned the casting, what, what are the areas from a technology standpoint that really is making them lead the way? Well, their electronics are to die for. I mean, um, nobody has anything quite like them. Uh, they, uh, they're half the size with about triple the power. Um, in fact, if you look at ADAS, the ADAS unit, we're pretty sure that they're at four and a half um, right now with the software that they've got. They may be even at five with the hardware, but uh, but they're not implementing it. And and that that rash or the the problem with level five is lawyers. I mean, you get into things like have you ever heard of the trolley uh, 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 predicament? They, is that who who it has to save theoretically, or yeah, or if there's someone in front of the trolley? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Wait, can you explain it just in case for anyone that might be listening who's not familiar with it? Yeah. Okay. So you are standing uh, in front of a um, uh, a stick or a controller that can um, that can uh, change the trolley's direction uh, uh, in three different ways. So if you uh, if you let the trolley do what it's doing right now, it's going to slam into about a dozen people. If you move the trolley to the right, um, that trolley will smash into um, a barrier. Um, obviously, the people in the trolley are going to have a bad day. And then if you switch it to the left, then you're going to run over a kid. He's going to be on the trolley and he can't be saved. So you run over the child, do you smash into the people because they're, they shouldn't be on the track? Or do you drive the trolley into a, um, a deadhead? Um, okay, so what do you do? All right, well, any human being has got like a split second to make that choice. Um, and, you know, some bonehead. I, uh, I was listening to uh, someone give this speech about the trolley example, and some bonehead said, Why'd you just step on the brake? Yeah, good job. Uh, so anyway, the, at the end of the day, this is, this is the thing that lawyers are salivating over. Can't win. These are no-win situations. Well, the lawyers can win. But they are no-win situations for the, uh, for the software. And um, these things have to be ironed out in the courts prior to level five being accepted um, on the planet. But I think that probably the Tesla is already sitting there comfortably at uh, at level five. It's just that they don't they don't they don't push it out. I think they're at level four and a bit right now, uh, based on my experiences with driving or having the car drive. Uh, yeah, but but that's number one. So the number one thing is the electronics and the software that goes along with it. Um, second would be powertrain. Um, I like their electric motors better than everybody's. They've got some magic stuff inside the castings. Um, I already had a couple of guys come back and tell me, oh, we look, we, 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 we couldn't find it. Yeah, you didn't look hard enough because we looked at the Model 3 castings and we looked at the Model Y castings and that little teeny tiny ingredient, that little alloy is in both of them. Those, that alloy helps, um, it's probably helping in two ways. It probably helps the flow of the uh, aluminum, but it's it's also doing something. It it, it refracts somehow and uh, and makes a difference to the uh, uh, to the performance of the electric motor. So I like the electric motor um, a lot. And then I think they have the best. They had the best batteries on the planet with the 2170s, and now with the 4680s. Uh, it's going to be a lot of catching up to do. So there are some companies who've, uh, who've got, uh, solid state batteries, um, that, that I've looked at and I'm pretty excited about. Um, but, but I haven't seen anybody that can compare with what, uh, what Tesla has, uh, has accomplished. Yeah, I, th I think one of the big announcements around that, that really wasn't hit on was just the fact that obviously there's the greater density. Uh, there's the great weight savings, but really everything I'm seeing is it's actually its ability to allow the cars to charge so much quicker because of its heat dissipation right. that I don't think people are fully realizing that I, I, a lot of people believe just like electric vehicle drivers are kind of the small niche, 
there might be some more people, but once you kind of lower the barriers to the point at which it's almost as easy and quick as filling up a tank, it just seems like the uh, value to go across that to ca that chasm and finally buy an electric vehicle has pretty much been removed. Um, going, going beyond the batteries, you've also kind of mentioned uh, repeatedly the casting technology and kind of the alloys they're using. And I think a lot of people don't fully understand what makes this so different when it comes to the castings. And I know you've said it a couple of times on your show, but if you could just kind of really quickly just sum up why this is so important and why this is so different, especially for the automotive industry, uh, I, I think that may be really help a lot of people who are listening. Yeah, well, Tesla is inventing their own alloys. They they don't uh, they don't just subscribe to whatever's in the marketplace. They um, they order um, they order their aluminum, and uh, it's all special special batch, and then they shoot it themselves. And I know to make the um, to make the uh, the castings that are going into the Model Y right now. Those are shot in milliseconds. People think that that's baloney, and uh, I did initially as well because I, I never heard. I don't. There's how do you make uh, aluminum so viscous that you could shove it in that fast? But uh, but in essence, they're made in milliseconds, and um, it it basically builds that whole area, the whole back end of the car, in a millisecond. Um, there's virtually no machining done on it. There's some uh, trimming that has to happen to get rid of the get rid of the runners and gates and whatnot. But uh, that's a millisecond, or let's say that let's say they can get them a second at a cramp, okay? And then with the trimming and stuff like that, maybe another I don't know. Let's say at the outset, 30 seconds, all done. Okay, if I've got 50 pieces that I just replaced. That's 50 dies that have to uh, have to be stamping product, and they're progressive dies. You can't just bend that aluminum into one or that steel into one shape that quickly. Um, then you got to be um, uh, you got to take those pieces and you got to put them together in a fixture, and then you got to weld them, and then you've got to on and on and on. Sometimes it's more than welding. Sometimes you have to put a you have to put uh, an adhesive or something in between them to weld them together. So they, uh, like an adhesive or something. All these things have to happen. It's gonna take a lot longer than 30 seconds, a lot longer. But when I get done with the casting, it's gonna be dead nuts perfect. When I get done with the weldment, it could be in a lot of different directions. Things happen when you weld products and stamp parts and stuff like that. It's different then one piece done and Tesla has gotten to the point where they move the material so quickly, there's no induced stresses. And with no induced stresses, it means that mm, it will warp. And if it doesn't warp, guess what? Um, <laughs> it means it's gonna be perfect every time. I don't have to heat treat those things. Mostly people have to put it into a T6 heat treat. And when you do that, then the induced stresses that you've got come free, but then you, eh, you twist the uh, casting. These don't have to be heat treated, so they they don't have to. They, there's no chance that you're ever going to warp anything. <laughs> Their casting technology is phenomenal, and and in essence, this is a result of uh, of their like their outside interests. When I was at Ford, we had an aerospace uh, division. We got rid of that because uh, some guys from Harvard came over and said, "Focus on your core competencies." <laughs> okay, good. Get rid of seats. Gone. You should not be doing anything electronic. Get rid of that. You don't need it. It's nasty. They're going to save money. I can remember a guy uh, giving a speech when I was a uh, consultant with, uh, with General Motors. And this guy was talking about the ultimate vehicle and uh, the, the, the direction that, uh, that GM should try and think about going. And in essence, what he said was um, that... <laughs> they would buy all the pieces and then from somebody else. And then we have somebody else put them all together and there would be one guy, one guy, that's it, one union guy. And he would have the GM badge, whether it was Chevy or GMC or whatever. And he'd go, 
right on the nose of the car. Done. Finito. That's it. Are you kidding me? I mean, I remember listening to this guy and I was sitting next to a vice president and um, and he leaned back and he, he said, I, I may have to sell my stock because, I mean, this is like stupid, absolutely stupid. But um, the guy in charge thought it was uh, brilliant. He said, this is great. We can get rid of all the people. We don't have to manage anything. Yeah, right. All we have to do is one part. Um, you have to be careful about um, hiring consultants. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to visit our website, connectingthegrid.com. There you can listen to our podcasts, contact us about sponsorship, or even be a guest on Grid Connections. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a positive rating on your favorite podcast or video streaming service. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out a lot too. Thank you again, and I look forward to us learning more together soon.